So uh, this is to uh, take apart the rear doors. Uh, there are a couple different top panels and lower panels. Uh, your top panel will look something like this and either it will have these type of fasteners or you'll just pull it straight off if you can't see any fasteners. Um, so these are the same ones we've seen before. I'm gonna just kind of get in there with a screwdriver, pop these out till they're loosened. And it's actually easier to do this with the, the van door closed uh, but for sake of filming, we're kind of doing it this way. Once you get it to this point, kind of work on, you know, getting one of these corners totally off. Um, and from there, you should be able to just pop the panel like that. Uh, so that's how you remove the top panel, and now we'll go down to the bottom. Okay, so uh, this is how you remove the lower panels. These are the formed plastic lower panels. You might have a cargo van that just has the simple flat panels, and if you do, it's the same way that you took off the top piece. You just pop those out and take it off. If you have this formed piece, we need to, there are upholstery snaps back here that hold this whole thing on, and we need to loosen those and get it past the handle. Another thing to know is that there are magnets in the top of these panels now. So if you feel the panel kind of fighting you, wanting to like snap back to the metal, that's, uh, that's what's going on there. So what I'll typically do is I'll find a spot with some flexibility and just start working my hands back there and then you'll feel some pretty positive snaps. And that's what you want to do. It's, you're not breaking the panel. You just want to get some good pops going. So, and just kind of work your way around the perimeter. And you're going to, sometimes you're going to notice these little gaskets falling out. And you want to make sure you hold on to those because those are important. That's a new feature for the 19 and we don't want to lose them. So keep on popping your panel, work your way around. And once you have the whole perimeter, you can work your way in a little bit. Let's see if we can get some, there you go. Start to come away and start working your hand back there as much as you can and just gently pulling it towards you. You know, you might need to make some kind of quick motions to Fully loosen all the snaps back here. And then when the panel's loose, you'll be able to do this. You'll notice that the whole thing is able to rotate. Now the last thing we have to do is we actually have to maneuver this thing over the factory door handle. So to do that, it will fit through if you just twist and gently kind of Work it back and forth, and it'll pop off. Now that's some that's a point where you want to be really gentle because you don't want to break the edges of your door handle because that is a piece you'd have to get from the dealership and replace. So if you got all those off, then you're ready to start doing hush mat and insulation. Okay, and rolling. A quick note: so when you remove your panel, you'll probably have a lot of fasteners still stuck in the door, and we're going to want to get those out. Uh, because those need to go back into the panel for when you press it back onto the van. Uh, we have a fancy tool here that you can get at Harbor Freight or on Amazon to pop them out. If you don't have this, you can totally use a, a flathead screwdriver or just a normal uh, yellow upholstery tool like that. Back of the 144 here, uh, we're at the rear doors. We're gonna prep the, uh, after the factory panels have come off, we're gonna prep these holes to accept the new adventure wagon panels. Uh, you can see there's six up here on top. We don't need to worry about the middle two as they don't get utilized with the ad wag panel. We're just gonna prep the uh, four corners on each of the high sides. 
uh, by drilling them out. And deburring. Make sure we get our rust prevention on there. Uh, when you're applying any sort of rust prevention, whether it's uh, what you got with the kit or if you have uh, any sort of paint or otherwise, you want to be either careful not to run over uh, the lipped edge of the factory sheet metal because uh, the wood panel will only come right up to that. So anything else you're either going to have to clean off or be careful not to uh, get it there. Then. Time to set the rib nets. Done with our first side, we're going to go to the other door and repeat the process. Twenty-five sixty-fourths drill bit. Go ahead and deburr those. Oh, that's just wonderful. Get our rust prevention. on the holes. And we'll set some rib nets. Uh, can't use acetone. We don't have any. You need to have all. Oh, we have a lacquer thinner. Uh, depending on the trim level of your van, uh, more specifically, typically with the cargo van, uh, your rear door panels may look different. You might not have the fully dressed factory trim. Uh, when purchasing your Adventure Wagon kit, you can discuss your options. Uh, Adventure Wagon does provide a cargo door panel, um, if that's what you have. And so, similar to the process above, um, you can use the panel to ensure you're looking at the right holes. You drill those out, deburr, rust prevent, set rib nuts and accept the adventure wagon cargo door panels if that's what your van calls for. On to the slider door of the 144. Uh, much the same process as the rear doors. Uh, we've got factory holes up here at the top. Adventure wagon provides a panel for this space as well. Uh, so we're going to take a look at these holes, 2564. Uh, we're going to utilize all eight holes across the top of the door here. We're going to punch them all out. Once they're punched, make sure we deburr, get all the flakes out of there. And always importantly, onto the rust prevention. Same thing as the other side, if you can keep from making too much of a mess where you don't drop below this factory trim line, then you won't have to worry about cleaning anything up when you apply the panel as it will be covered. Got the rust prevention on there. Time to set some rib nuts. Right, 
down to the top section, we can move to the lower section. Down on the lower portion of the slider door, uh, same rules apply. Adventure Wagon supplies a door panel for this. Uh, we've got factory holes we're going to punch. If you have any question about which holes you're actually going to drill out, uh, you can very easily take the panel and match it up to the hole so you know which ones you're drilling. Um, they're all the same indented factory style. 2564. Going to go ahead and punch all these out. Give yourself a little bit extra clearance with a drill by opening the door. Now on this lower center one, there is a second piece of sheet metal that you can go ahead and drill through as well to make sure you have clearance. Got that. Now, when you're doing the slider door, the very top right corner here, uh, as you can see, uh, we had some uh, people working ahead so we can get some work done here. And uh, this is a great example of what you don't want to do. As you can see, uh, we're looking at the very top right mounting hole for the lower portion of the slider door. Behind this hole uh, is a second layer of really thick, strong sheet metal. So when you're drilling out the first layer to, in order to be able to set the rib nut, what you want to do, uh, the, the best technique, is when you start to drill, um, you'll pull the trigger and get the hole going a little bit, and then as you nut, as you breach it and you're about to go through you can pulse the drill as you're applying pressure and so that way as soon as the drill bit goes through you know you're not going to keep moving forward as you're only pulsating so that's the best technique in order to just get through this first layer of sheet metal without doing what you see here what's happened is if you're drilling constantly and you're pushing really hard that second layer of sheet metal is actually bent in a u and so as soon as the drill bit gets through it's going to grab it and kick it upright, which is why you see the uh, hole has been contorted here. Now, if this happens, you're not necessarily up a creek. This uh, can be salvaged. If you have half of a good hole intact, there's a pretty good chance you can still get a rib nut to grab. And there's some things we can do to fix it as well. Before we get that far, in order to address that second layer of sheet metal, there's a couple different tactics you can use. Uh, the first being, a punch and a hammer. If you get uh, a small enough punch uh, with the hammer, uh, once you have your first layer of sheet metal drilled out, you can get that punch in there and start knocking away at that second layer of sheet metal to bend it away from the face. If you're having quite a bit of trouble there, you can also step down to a smaller drill bit size, say maybe an eighth or three sixteenths, uh, and with a strong, steady hand, uh, put a smaller hole in that second layer of sheet metal to then give yourself a better opportunity with a punch to be able to spread that back layer of sheet metal out even more. A combination of those two things should give you clearance. Uh, in order to be able to set a rib nut and have enough room for the bolt that's going to go through to hold the panel, you'll know you'll have enough space when you can take uh, an unsqueezed rib nut and put it in there and it's going to be flush to the sheet metal like you see there. If it does that without hitting anything in the rear, you know you have enough space to be able to use the bolt provided with the kit to hold the panel up later. So once you've got enough room for that rib nut, uh, then you can move on with setting them. Uh, to fix the sheet metal that we have here that's been punched out, I think I'm gonna be okay with the half of the sheet metal here, but I'm gonna go ahead and try and give myself some more surface to grab. So on the outside of this flayed sheet metal, I'm going to take that same punch and hammer it back into position. Now as you can see the metal starting to fold back to where it came from. And you might not get all of it, but if you can get any of it, it's going to help you in the long run. Now. As you will see in a second, I've gotten the sheet metal back closer to the uh, size of the hole I had before. So when the rib nut goes in, I'm going to have more sheet metal to grab. If you can repair it to that extent even, you're going to be in pretty good shape to get a rib nut to grab. So moving from here, we'll deburr, rust prevent, and get the rib nut set. Deburr all the holes you punch. 
to hit it with all the rust prevention then it should be just fine now because you've mangled up the metal in the back too you want to make sure you can get whatever brush you have all good and back there to fill that entire void make sure you get all the metal you messed up inside and out that looks pretty good Again, if you're careful not to go over the raised exterior edge of this side, then you won't have to clean anything up because the panel will cover it. Got our rust prevention in. Time to set some rib nuts. As we get to the lower portion of the door, again, it helps to open it, give yourself a little more space for whatever tool you're using. Stuff a little more room. Here we'll pay a little bit of extra attention to the top right corner where we had all that fun with the sheet metal. When you're setting this, if you do have some mangled sheet metal, it'll help to try and pull the rib nut with whatever tool you're using to the good side of the hole, which we have down here in the six to nine o'clock. So I'm going to take all my leverage down this way, try and set the rib nut. It pulled out, good grab, so we're good to go. No problems there. <laughs> 